Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, guys. We're back again, and uh, this is going to be the first video in the uh, kind of the food portion of our little YouTube channel. So today we're going to be showing you a not necessarily quick, but an easy recipe for a French fry alternative. Now you may be saying, "I don't like that. No, I want French fries." Trust me, I love burgers and fries as much as the next guy. I love these things. <laughs> Five ingredients, that's it. Simple, easy stuff. It just takes a little time because you're actually baking these. Try these with kids. My husband and I do not have children. I can act like a kid. <laughs> we do not have children, but I think if you put this down on a meal in place of fries with some ketchup right beside it and didn't tell your kids, they'd never know the they difference. They wouldn't know the difference. All right, this is what our fry alternative is gonna be. It's a butternut squash, and I'm gonna show you how we turn these into fries. As always, start with freshly washed hands before you start anything in the kitchen. She's a nurse. <laughs> she tells me that kind of stuff all the time. First thing we're gonna do is actually start to peel the butternut squash with a, just a regular potato peeler or vegetable peeler. Okay, so now we've got our squash all uh, nakedified and peeled. Yes, as if, he, as if he cooks this. He doesn't cook this recipe. <laughs> he thinks he knows what he's doing. No. I eat it, that's the important part. <laughs> okay, the next step is we're gonna start to cut it and prepare it into french fries. I wanna say one thing, this is a very hard squash to cut, so be careful. Okay, first part we're gonna do, make sure your hands out of the way, and steady, and you cut off this Stem. Stem. Okay? Most of the recipes that I've seen, they say to just cut right here and use this portion for fries and then use this portion to make butternut squash soup or just butternut squash. But I actually use the entire thing and I'll show you how I do that. So the next step, if you choose to use the entire squash, go ahead and cut off this end. It doubles as an arm workout. <laughs> Yeah, I have my handy dandy, um... Whacker? <laughs> no, well, I use it as a whacker, but it's actually a uh, sharpener for my knife. Sometimes I do this just in case. If my husband's not here and he's not here to help me, I don't want to end up without a hand. And the next step is to actually cut here. And this is where I usually use my whacker or knife sharpener. It's probably a good thing the knife company doesn't see you doing that because I would kill the lifetime warranty on those things, I'm sure. Well, I don't whack this, the blade part, I whack back here. I know. Okay, so there's that. Then the next part is we're going to cut this down the center. Okay, this is the butternut squash part where you see like the seeds like in most squash. This part does not have the seeds. Okay, now you can use this part to make your soup or you can follow along with me and make these into fries like I'll bake them into fries. But you need to scoop out this stuff and it's just easy, just take a spoon. Okay, now that I've scooped out the center, I'm just gonna put these off to the side and I'm gonna start with this portion. I'm just going to start cutting it into my fry shapes. The most important part about this for cooking sake is consistency of sizes. You want to make sure that they are cut to be like french fries are when you buy them from a fast food joint. Channel your aner and burrell. You really want to be very careful with your knife cuts. <laughs> you know, your knife cuts must be all the same size. Of course I don't know why Amberell is suddenly Austrian but whatever. But that's about the size you want the fries to be. Now, if you cut yours bigger than this or smaller than this, it's going to change your cook time, which we will talk about right as I'm getting ready to put into the fry. Uh, the other thing is that this, this may look kind of large, because it's just you know, four or five inches long, but these do cook down quite a bit when you're done with them. So you want to make them a little larger than you might otherwise think they should be. Now I'm going to show you how to turn this into fries. This is kind of a trial and error thing. Just do like I did with the other one. And I'm just going to cut it and... 
Also, at this point, it's a good time to go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 Fahrenheit to 18 Celsius if I should have anybody who watches and does the metric system. Which is the better system, even though I'm un-American for saying that. Okay, everything's cut. Time to eat, right? <laughs> Not yet. Oh. As you can see, there's quite a bit in here, and I'm going to now show you the ingredients that you will need to finish up these fries. Super simple. Mm. I take this olive oil and I put it into this um, device and I spray it onto my fries, but if you don't have one of those, it's about two tablespoons and you drizzle it over. Then I put pepper on mine. Granted, I have a pepper grinder. If you only have just regular table pepper, you can sprinkle it on. I also use about a teaspoon of salt, maybe a little bit more, but if you are on a salt-free diet, feel free to omit it or use a Mrs. Dash flavoring, like one of their Cajun flavorings. Whatever you would like to have on a fry, you can put on here. And my husband likes a little garlic on there, so we put garlic. That's another thing. If you don't like garlic, you don't have to put it. I think I was Italian in a previous life. Also, you need a baking sheet. Now, as you can tell, this is not a baking sheet. This is a pizza sheet. The reason why I like this is because of the holes. I feel my fries get a little crispier. Plus, this is nonstick, so I don't have to add any more oil. I have to... But you got to prime the pump. <laughs> and I'll give it a nice spray. Here's the pepper. It's, the other thing is, is, this is not exact measurements. I will write the recipe down in the description box with exact measurements if you cho so choose. And here's the salt. Make sure you put on the sprinkle because you don't want to pour a whole bunch of salt on there. I've done it. All right, and I just kind of sprinkle and a little garlic. Here's the fun part for the kids. Now they get to put their hands in it. It's kind of a texture thing. Kids like textures. I like textures. <laughs> So I just place them on my sheet. These are going to cook down a significant amount. And now that my oven is preheated, I'm just going to put them in. My oven's actually very hot when I put it in, so I'm going to use my... I put them down on the bottom rack. There See you oven. soon. Mm -hmm. They take about... 25 to 30 minutes, sometimes 35 if you want to try to get them a little extra crispier. Towards the end of your time, really watch them closely because they go from done to burnt very quickly. I set my timer for 15 minute intervals. That way I get the chance to check on them to make sure that they're not burning and after each 15 minutes I give them a nice stir. First 15 minutes is up and I'm going to show you how I toss them around and then put them back in for another 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah. Look at that delicious steam. Okay, that'll be good. And now you put them back in for another 15 minutes. As you saw in the very beginning of the video, you noticed I had to do double batches. Now, the you, most people would think, go ahead, put them on a, all of them on a cookie sheet and put them in. The thing with squash is, is there's a lot of moisture in it. And if it's not circulating well, all that squash is going to turn into mush rather than fry. It is an item that you need to cook one batch at a time. Okay, we are finally done with our 30 minutes of cook time. I'm going to show you my finished product and allow Todd to taste them and tell you what, you, what he thinks of them. Longest 30 minutes ever. Mmm. Some of them cook a little quicker than others, so you get some burnt ones. Well charred, not yeah, burnt. These, well one, these you probably don't want to eat, but the ones that kind of look like this are fine. Now that they've cooled a little bit, Todd's going to give them a try. Mmm. Looks like a fry. Feels like has, a fry. He has his ketchup over here. It tastes like a little bit, just a slightly sweeter version of a regular french fry, but not nearly as sweet as a sweet potato. It's really, really tasty. To me, these really easily pass off just as well as french fries do. I think they're really great. One final shot of our fries before we go ahead and eat them. Nom, nom, nom. So that's the latest video. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out the uh, next few recipes we put up. Thanks. Hey, right, bye guys. Bye.